Hello, this is Chris Menard. I have a great Excel exercise today. If you're an Excel user, this is something you need to know. It is how to unpivot columns in Excel. This is going to be part one of a three-part series on Get and Transform Data, uh, also unpivot columns. So I'm going to put the two Microsoft support articles about Power Query, which is Get and Transform in Excel 2016. And the other one I'm going to put up here is Unpivot Columns from Microsoft Support. And we're going to end up in the Power Query Editor, Unpivoting Columns. So let's go ahead and get started. The issue with the spreadsheet that I'm currently working on is Column A is okay. I've got Product in Column A. But then I've got 12 months of the year 2022 running from column B to column M. Ideally, I should only have three columns of data on this spreadsheet and I should have 36 rows because I've got 12 months of data that's unpivoted with three rows in each one. The 12 times three is the 36. Now, if you're saying what's wrong with the way it looks now, it's easy to read. This is somewhat of the final product after you pivot the table using a pivot table. Right now, what's wrong with this is I can't sort, I can't filter, I can't do subtotals, and I can't make a pivot table. So I need to get the data in the correct format or a tabular format. So here we go. And as I said, this is part one of three. So next week, I'm going to go to this next worksheet because right now I've only got one header row. I see people doing this all the time. They actually have two header rows. They've got East Region, West Region, Quarter 1 through 4. That's two header rows. That's a big no-no. And then the third video I'm going to do on this is I'm going to take this data, which is missing data in column A, and then somebody went and did totals after each state. So that'll be the third one. Here we go. Before I do the get and transform, I need to either make a table, but get and transform will do it for me. I'm going to go to the data tab. If you notice over to the left, it says get and transform data. That's exactly what I want. Two things are going to happen when I click on from table range. Since I haven't made this a table, which is the control T keyboard short, shortcut, Excel will make it a table by itself. And then it's going to open up the Power Query Editor. So I'm going to click it one time. It picked up the entire range. I do have a header in the top row. So when I click OK, the table's created. And then two, Power Query Editor starts immediately. The table was created, and here is the Power Query Editor. If you've never been in here, this is going to be really simple. It took the data that I had and threw it in here. So I've still got 13 columns. There's product. I scroll over. There is the month of December 2022. Before I unpivot the columns, I want to tell you one little item. The word product has ABC next to it, which means it's text. It recognized that it was text. The 12 months have one, two, three, which means that they're numbers. So let's see if I end up with my 36 columns. Column A product is correct. Correct. The 12 months is what I need to unpivot. I'm going to right click on the column that's correct. And I'm going to select unpivot other columns. Just in case you're wondering, because I don't have it in this exercise, if I had product in A, region in column B, and the regions were East region and West region, so let's say that that's region right here, I would hold down shift and highlight both of them. Then I would right click and unpivot the other columns. But I only have one corrected column. So let's right click, unpivot other columns. I should end up with 36 rows if I'm correct. And I do. Bottom left corner, three columns, 36 rows. Now, 
Two things I need to talk about before we put this back in the Excel file as a worksheet. A is correct. I'm not worried about A. But column B and C have attribute and value. So it doesn't know what to name these columns. So I'm going to simply right click. It doesn't matter which one you do first. And there is rename. I could have renamed it later in case you're wondering, but I'll rename it now. Right click, rename again. Perfect. One last thing, if you notice, you got to be careful with dates. It's showing the months as ABC, which means when I'm done, if I was to sort A to Z or ascending, if I leave it as text, it'll sort April, August. In other words, it would go in it would go in alphabetical order. I need to make this a date field, so I'm gonna right click, change type, text is checked. I just told you it was. I'm gonna make it a date. There you go. Months. Icon change. Now I can sort A to Z. I'll get January uh, before Feb, before March, before April. So I'm happy now. Last step. So I got my 36 rows. Close and load to. One last thing to tell you. I'm looking at my notes. If you make a mistake when you're in the Power Query Editor, there is no Control Z or Undo. Your steps that you're taking are over here to the right. So let's say I made a mistake and I wasn't supposed to do that last step. I come in here, point to the X, click it. So there's your steps, but that was correct. So here I go again. Notice it's on renamed. Right click. Change the date. It added that step and it keeps them up. Close and load, close and load two. I had three worksheets in that file. It's asking me what you want to put this in. Table works, new worksheet works. So I should end up with four worksheets, but now, perfect. Now I can come in here. I can do my filtering because I only want to see I'm making this up. The first three months that works. We clear that one. I can also do a sort. Right click, sort, largest to smallest. I'm in business. I could go make a pivot table, which I'm actually about to do. I could do subtotals. I have, this is the way the data needs to be in here instead of this method right here. One thing that's really cool when you're running the Power Query Editor is if the person that's doing the data entry for some reason really likes this format that they have. This is how they want to do it. Because this is a table, if they come in here, we got shirts, shoes, hats. I am just going to throw some numbers in here to have some numbers. So now I've got four products. Back over here, I can do a right click, refresh. I've got 36 rows. I should have another 12 to go to 48. Let's see if that worked. And of course, I'm looking for pants. And 49, the header rows in row ones, so there's 48 rows of data. If you want to see the reason it's called unpivot columns, this is the end result right here. This is what you should end up with, not start with. So I'm back over here doing my sorting, doing my filtering, and I say, hey, I want a pivot table. Insert, pivot table. It's going to put it on a new sheet. Hit OK. There's my products. There's my months. There you go. That's the end result. So I just pivoted the data. That's why with Git and Transform, it's known as unpivot columns. Anyway, that was part one of a three-part series. 
So this one's coming up next week. This one's going to be tricky because I got the two header rows. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate your support. Everyone have a wonderful weekend.